phone the police. I'll go after him. Hold tight. Oh dear. You stupid! Careful, dear. You don't want to get booked for dangerous driving. Did you get them? Yeah, I did. Good boy. Did anyone see you? One of the jeweler. Like that? Like what? Your moustache. Yeah. Oh, I hope not. That must have been when I was running down the alley. Change into this place right away. Yeah. Not my flaming Barry down here, with his car. Dangerous driving as well, eh? As well as what? Smashing ground. Bullets is yours. Hey, you don't say. Yeah, well, what do you say about the man? Oh, four-eyed little fellow he was. Moustache, eyebrows needed a lawnmower over him. Got away in a Rolls Royce, he did. GL114. Uh-oh. Diversion ahead. Uh, I could do with a diversion. A police one, sweetheart. <laughs> In the second floor front commander, number 45, the one on the corner, with a gun. And his share of the loot, if I know Shorty Fleming. Does he use the gun? No, sir. Now, the crime is beginning to pay, or Robert Gresham's going straight in a big way. What, sir? Unlike Shorty Fleming. How does a little rat like Fleming get mixed up in a quarter of a million pound robbery? Well, little rats get ambitious to be big rats. I better go and talk to him. That's because personal touch, David. Don't be an idiot. I know you. And you wouldn't kill anybody. Wrong, Mr. Gideon. Myself. I'll kill myself. I'm not going to a jail again. Not for the sex I get this time. Call him off. Let me get away. Or I'll end it. No, I mean it. I mean this. Now you come out of there with your hands up and turn Queen's evidence. We'll see what we can do for you. No promises. How's this, Mr. Gideon? You'll get me away. Kind of a hostage. I'll... Shorty, I'll... shorty. Why didn't you stick to housebreaking? I wanted to retire, Mr. Gideon. One last big job in there. Yes, yes, I know, I know. All right. to you, Mr. Gresham. Well, now, uh, here we are, sir. About 2,000 pounds worth, I reckon. The usual rate, 10%. That's all right with you, sir. 200 pounds. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you. About a month. I shall look forward to it. Is there anything special you're looking for? Some furs, perhaps? 
Well, do my best. As always. Very nice of you to say so. <laughs> How is Mrs. Gresham? Oh, flourishing, yeah. Mrs. H? Oh, touch of neuralgia sometimes. Uh, so usually. Oh, well, none of us getting any younger. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Gresham. Jerry Barnes, Hunter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, British Railways. You think I need relaxing today, do you? No more than usual, darling. I've lost my nerve, Margaret. Finished at 50. Say something. You must say it, Robert. Hell, yeah, that clumsiness today. Dropping the brick and then getting the tray stuck as it came out of the window. Look at it this way. I've done one crime a month, on an average, for 20 years. That's 240 separate sets of tension. You get accumulated stress. More of it in, in a shorter time than, well, any salesman has to go through. You've said it at last. What a relief. Well, you knew, didn't you? I mean, you, well, you admitted it. You, you wanted me to say it. So we stop. The end of our life of crime. It's quite a moment. Quite a moment. Yes to it. Yes. Yes to what? What are we going to do? Well, have we got used to 40 or 50 quid a week? We slogged our way out of that crummy boarding house at Catford to this hotel. Why? So we didn't have to work. Now we want to work, we can't because we're not trained for anything. We're nothing legal anyway. How are we going to live? Well, we don't know yet. But at least we'll be together. If we went on like this, we'd be caught. And that would mean separation. Even work's better than that. Oh, God, yes. Well, at least we know what to drink to. Us. Together, darling. No matter what. You're not the suicidal type. It's a pity you didn't realize you're also not the type to get mixed up in a job of that class. Yeah, I'll remember that when I come out. In how many months do you reckon? Yeah, shorty. I'll do what I can for you. Come on. Well, now we've got a chance to pick up the whole gang. Yeah, and catching up on what else has been going on in London today. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Breaking and entering Chiswick. Stolen car, I guess. Pickpocket, Lincoln's Inn. Dippy Delaney, well, well. Know him? Yeah, Charm Unlimited. Stolen car, wants it. I bet he gets the solicitor he robbed to defend him. Stolen car, Lambeth. Smash and grab, Bloomsbury. Stolen car, Poplar. College Road, Bloomsbury, near Shorty Fleming's hideout. Getaway car identified. Roll GL114. Uh -huh, stolen. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that the one you saw at Holmes Avenue with someone you knew in it? Can't say. I didn't get the number. Flash bulb went off. Coincidence, though, isn't it? It's coincidence with a unique radiator. How well did you know him? Oh, fairly well. I nicked him once, sent him down for six months. His one and only conviction in 20 years of assorted crime. I'll uh, tip off division. What's the name? Remember it. Robert Gresham. Good boy. Now forget it. You'll be wasting division's time. Take it from me, half an hour after the job, Robert Gresham would be cleaning a surgeon's fingernails. Oh, so the personal touch is due for another airing today, huh? An unofficial chat with Mr. and Mrs. Gresham on the way home.
Gresham. Good evening, sir. Oh. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. Caught us red-handed, I'm afraid. Infringement of copyright. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't you sit down? Thank you. Evening, Mrs. Gresham. Good evening, Commander. Well, uh, how's business? Inflationary. Too few policemen chasing too many crimes. And you? Oh, mustn't grumble. Well, nobody with a Rolls Royce should uh, grumble. Who are? A Rolls. In fact, seeing you in your top people's car made me realize just how long it is since I have seen you. So, here I am. How nice. Just uh, keeping in touch. Robert, dear, it appears you have a wildly wealthy double. That must have to be in a Rolls. <laughs> Earlier on, around Bloomsbury. You're mistaken. Uh, no. Mind you, I was surprised, as I said to my assistant. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Commander. Yeah. Gideon, about that Rolls Royce, sir. Offer him a drink. An amnesia cocktail. Thank you. Good night. You mean I can go? Oh, thanks. Good night. News of a stolen car from Belgravia. Rolls Royce, oddly enough, just after daybreak. Abandoned at a parking meet in Bayswater an hour later. Now, in that hour, I know, and uh, you know that I know, the pair of you smash and grabbed Buller's jewellery shop in Bloomsbury. Well, really? We don't have to listen to you. You then disposed of the loot at Cyril Hunter's 213 Fortune Hill. Who in heaven's name is Cyril Hunter? A fence. Such a fence, it's astonishing he's not held together with wire. Margaret, that get the solicitor on the phone, will you? And per routine of nearly 20 years, you then received a cheque from a bookmaker, keeping up the pretense of being an incredibly lucky couple who lived by gambling. Now, what bookmaker do that? Mac Martinson. A 15% cash commission, Murky Mac would sell his ears as ashtrays. You're going too far, Commander. These are grave charges. Because I have no evidence that there are any kind of charges. But I do have a little advice for you. Now, you've had a nice long run of luck. At racing. Now, don't you think it's about time you both retired? Commander Gideon. A few years back, you caught me robbing a safe. I went to jail for that. And that is the extent of my criminal record. I think you'd better go. I know you'd better retire. At least you'll go out in a blaze of glory. A rose for a getaway. Well, well, well. Good night. Keep in touch, won't you? Gideon's right. We must retire. We've already decided to stop. Stop's one thing. Retire's another. Retire means security. Enough money to live on happily ever after. Well, there's no pension scheme for petty larcenists. Robbie, we've got to pull one more job. The biggest ever. So big that Gideon would never connect us with it. Big enough to keep us in comfort for the rest of our lives. To retire would take thousands. What kind of job would pay off 10% that way at Cyril Hunter's? We don't want goods this time. Uh -huh. You mean cash? Yes. Yeah. But how? That's the question. Well, let's think. <laughs> as we all wait tensely to find out exactly what did happen in there today. It all took place in that room on the second floor, and here is Commander Gideon now. Commander, what has happened in there today? I'm sorry I can't make any statement. Were you actually threatened with a gun, Commander? I'm sorry I can't tell you anything. All right? Thank you. Well, as you can see, I'm unable to obtain any statement for you at the moment, but this much right, I can tell you. Right, up to bed, Malcolm. Commander See him George up for me, Matthew. Commander George has just been involved in one of the most courageous... Ah, kids. Dad, you're on TV. Yes. A swinging performance. She'll bring you a lot of offers. Only don't get typecast as a policeman. Yeah. You're on six o'clock as well. They said the man had a gun. Did he have a gun, Dad? Why didn't he shoot you? Hey, now, why aren't you in bed, eh? Oh, I let him stay up to see the news again. All right, off you go. Here, hang this up, Owen. Eddie. Did 
Did the man have a gun? That wasn't dangerous. If it was, I'd have sent Keane. Oh, very likely. Well, it's been quite a day. I nearly nailed the Greshams, too. Subject changed right. <laughs> Who are the Greshams? They're the most remarkable criminals I have ever met. Husband and wife team. They do one crime a month, net about 200 pounds or so, and live quietly till next time. Sounds sensible. Yeah, they're quite nice people, too, really. There's only two things wrong with them. They hate work, and they're as crooked as a yokel's walking stick. And you've never caught them? The man once. He stepped out of his glass into safe cracking. It's not pleasant to recall the look on her face when he was sent down. Separation to them. Might as well have been a death sentence. I've got it. Catford. Catford? Catford, that factory. What factory? The one we overlooked from that awful room when we first got married. That tin pot place. It's expanded. I read about it a few months ago. Taken over the whole area. Employs 3,000 people. And people get paid. Wages, robbery? 50,000 pounds. That must be at least. Well, at uh, 2,000 a year, 20 years, that leaves 10,000 for mad extravagance. What do you say? Do we do it? We will. We'll buy our own little house. We'll have a holiday. We'll go to Salzburg for the Mozart Festival. How do we do it? First thing tomorrow, you get a job at the factory. A job? Uh, work? Only for a while, darling. Only for a little while. Why not? Just this once. Oh, good morning, Philip. Can you spare a moment to talk about the Howard case? Uh, not now, Phyllis. Make it about 11.30 in my office, all right? Yes, all right, sir. Frank, I'll tell him. Right. Morning, sir. Morning, David. Any news? Yes, Jackson arrested at New Quay, Tiller at Gatwick Airport. Thank you, Shorty Fleming. Anything in from Interpol? Plenty. It's on your desk. Oh, how'd your date go? I had the means and the motive, but uh, she wouldn't give me the opportunity. How was yours? I wish I knew. You better put a tail on the Greshams. Oh? What are they up to now? That's as all the best detectives say is what I would like to find out. Um, the insurance guns. Huh? That Minister of Insurance job, Berkshire. Oh, yes. I knew this would come in useful one day. Oh, rather, yeah. Any stand? Oh, go on. Don't be so mean. Stop off and buy a few. Shall be long. Good luck. Johnson's on the line, sir. Looks as though Robert Gresham's after a job. Mitchell Plastics, Catford. Fine. Looks as though my little talk must have registered after all. Thank the officer and time to report back to the division. see why I don't have to work in the place. Let everyone get to know my face. 
It's the office on the end. Marvellous. Tuesday today. We keep a record of all the information we need till Friday. And God bless the British workmen for insisting on being paid in cash. Hmm. Can you see anything? Hmm? Can you see anything? Hmm. Not a lot. Last of the day shift cars leaves car park at 6.36. 636. What time is it? 8.10. They're all in. Looks like it. Mm -hmm. All night shift cars in park. By 8, 10 p.m. Why that time gap between the end of the day work and beginning of night work? Oh, maintenance. Uh, they all service machinery between shifts. Isn't industry fascinating? Well, I suppose so. You care for that sort of thing. Be sure they're all in. Every last lovely little average 17 pound week, one of them. Night watchman entering main office block. Handsome boy. I hope he's punctual too. 9.45 every night. He is late. What time is it for Pete's sake? 10.17. Remember this watch, darling? Hmm? Your 16th anniversary present to me. Best little watch I ever lifted. At last! There he goes, your handsome boy. Night Watchman, 1017. Unreliable. Today's youngsters, honestly. Honestly? It's a good one, coming from you. <laughs> you know, love, I reckon the way they work overtime over there should be at least 50,000 pounds. If it ever arrived. <laughs> Seven minutes to three. Armored security car. Well, now to see what happens to it. The cashier's... The cashier's going to the safe. Now for the code to open it. Oh, blast! I can't see the combination. Well, how many movements? I don't know. He's got his arm right across it. Guards are going into the office with the money. Now they're opening the boxes. <gasps> Hundreds of bundles of lovely, lovely notes. Three seconds quicker that time. Get it down much more. And we'll have the money out of the safe before it's opened. <laughs> Instead of another go, just for luck. Bobby, wait. Surely we've practiced enough for a whole week now. Suppose you don't manage. Oh, look, don't keep on, love. I'll get the safe open tomorrow night. Now, don't worry. I only worry when we don't have an alternative method planned on any job. Why are you resisting? You think just because I got picked up on my last safe cracking job that I'm I bound don't to be... think anything of the kind. I want you to succeed. I want you to vindicate yourself. But, darling, jelly nights, it's so ostentatious. We ought to have some as a last resort. Okay. Jelly night. <laughs> They decorate the drinks in your place. Talk about Harvest Festival. It must be 11 years, Mr. Gresham. It's all of that, Mr. Pater. I hear you've done very well. I hear you supplied Jellignite. Rather out of your line, isn't it? Is it still in yours? What is it? A hundred pounds a stick. I'll take a couple. If I may advise, don't practice false economy. Rather a bang too many, I always say. Two will do. Delivery date. Now.
Mr. Gresham, the only jelly I keep here is wrapped round the prawns. I must have it tonight, Mr. Pater. Couldn't be simpler. CBD, cash before delivery. All right. Deliver it personally at your hotel in an hour. Anything else you want? Passport, passenger, currency conversion. Not tonight, thank you. Oh dear, don't you want your drink? No thanks. I'm not a vegetarian. like if we separated, dear. You realize this is our last, perhaps our greatest job, so let's be professional to the bitter end. The sweet end, my darling. Six o'clock, synchronized. The wages clerks are just leaving. Let's just run through the routine once more. Good idea. First, we steal a car. You get your overalls on in the back. Then you do the same. We drive to the factory. Arriving there about eight o'clock to make certain of a parking place near the entrance. We mingle with a night shift and clock in. and wait until 8.20. Oh, now, look, just because Gresham has a drink with Pater doesn't prove he's planning to rob the Bank of England, doesn't it? Do you think I'm being too optimistic? Well, you seem eager to make allowances for me. Nonsense. Him. All right, put a tail on again, starting now. Two minutes behind shit. Oh, you and your shit. You look not really vital. You better. My that light. I've got all night. I don't need all night. Just give me five minutes of that safe.
of four letters. Do you hear that click? No. The lock tumbler seems to want to respond to four letters. Sure. Mm, positive. Try the obvious. Wait. Do you hear it? No. But you haven't got my ear for that sort of thing. I haven't got your patience either. You pay a P A Y E. Hey, this office. Could be. Have a stick. Come on. All right, now, see you there. One more. Drop me. Yeah. This way. Seven thousand pound wages robbery. Safe blasted early last night. Wages snatched. Thieves get away with fifty-seven thousand pounds. Wages haul. Safe gang use explosives for getaway. Wages grab at Mitchell Plastics Catford, Robert Gresham's place of work. Gresham's aren't smart enough to think of blasting their own escape route. Well, you hope. I certainly hope they're not like all the others. Long time, small time, trying for the big time. I right, tip up division to check on. All right. It's the first time we've ever been on the front page. And aren't they fanciful? Sprinkler thieves wash away clues. Safe gang. <laughs> Use explosives for getaway, too. 50,000 quid. Us. I can't believe it. And I've never even had to work at the factory. Gresham doesn't work at the factory. There's no record of him even applying for a job. But he was seen going in there that day. He's going to be seen coming in here this day. Pick them both up. We'll go to the travel agency as soon as the music ends. We can't switch this up in the middle. No, it's so beautiful. Oh, the maid, already. Morning. I'm Chief Inspector Keane. Good morning, Inspector. Commander Gideon would like to see you both. What about? Our future, I think. Very nice of you, Commander, to take this interest in us. Now then, just tell me what you've been doing since the last time I saw you. We've taken your advice. Given up gambling. So uncertain, you know. We're not getting any younger. We decided to open a little shop. Tobacconists, perhaps. Or toys. Fireworks, perhaps. What a nice idea. We have no children. Now, before you decided to go into business, Mr. Gresham, you tried to get a job, didn't you? Uh, almost. What do you mean, almost? Well, I uh, actually went along to a factory. Where? And I got right to the hiring department. Where? And I thought, you know, over 50. Nobody wants you when you're over 50, do they? So, you know, I could feel it in the atmosphere of 
Big modern factory. Mitchell Plastics. And so I uh, made up my mind there and then, didn't apply. Mitchell Plastics, Catford. Yes, uh, I believe it was. How did you know? We had you followed. The concern you show for us. I'm overwhelmed. So was Mitchell's factory last night. Just what did you do last night? Last night? Festival Hall, all Beethoven, lovely concert, packed house. Well, if that's all, Commander, we'll keep in touch. Now, please sit down. Now, look, I'll do what I can for you. No promises. If you return that money intact. Money? Young man, call in a psychiatrist. Your chief seems to be obsessed with the belief that my husband commits every crime in London. No, not every crime, Mrs. Gresham. Just one a month the last 20 years, plus last night's. And not him alone, you always work together. You've been overworking, Commander. Do you really think that I don't know what was going on inside your mind the last time I saw you? Telepathy as well, Commander. Experience, Mrs. Gresham. I've seen it happen so many times. The last big keep-us-for-life job that always comes unstuck. Mr. Gresham, are you a friend of Mr. Peters? Mr. P uh, not especially. Did he supply the jelly knife? What jelly knife? Robert went to see him about a loan to start her own business. He refused. And I'd like to say at once, if Mr. Petrus found dead, my husband didn't kill him. You're the brains, aren't you, Mrs. Gresham? Oh, yes. Oh, you admit it. But of course. I confess we used my hatpin to pick out horses. To that extent, I'm the brains. Oh, well, it's a fair cop, as I believe the criminal class to say. Where's the handcuffs? They call them bracelets here, love. Yeah, and they come in all sizes, male and female. Now, show Mr. and Mrs. Gresham out. See you soon. The tail's going on and off for more time than that donkey game. On again? Night and day. They're the ones. We're being followed. There's no need to panic. We leave the money where it is for as long as necessary. What do we live on in the meantime? Toys or tobacco. Whatever you want to sell. Really start a shop? We couldn't afford it. Mac Martinson. A legal there this time. Any interest he likes. Mm -hmm. We can afford it, eventually. Bang goes Salzburg this year. There'll be other years, dear. All of them ours, together. Gideon was right. You are the brains. I've put Johnson on them again, sir. No. You, uh, you sure about the Gresham? I wish I wasn't. Good morning. Forgive this informal visit, but I simply had to congratulate you. On what? A remarkable operation. I'd weep if anything went wrong for you. What are you talking about? Your escape plan. Escape? Surely at least you've been thinking of South America, for example. South America? Why should we? Because the yard is onto you, and they'll get you eventually, unless you're not here to be got. I've had this place watched and you followed ever since I read the papers this morning, only because I wanted to help, of course. You must get away, you know. Decide now, and you can be safely on board ship tonight. How much? Ten thousand pounds for the voyage each. The passports, five hundred pounds and incidental expenses. Shall we say twenty-five thousand pounds? A nice round sum. Very nice. Daylight robbery, nothing doing. Wait, Robert. We don't have the money here. Oh, <laughs> enchanting, Mrs. Gresham. I know that. I mean... I know exactly what you mean. This hotel is being watched by the police. How do you get out to get the money? Not to worry. Leave all that to me. I do earn my fee, you know. Shall we go? Just like that, eh? Leave everything. Oh, well.
clear? Yes. He really didn't follow us here after he dropped us. That Pater. If he ever has to disappear from England, the smile will be the last thing to go. Like the Cheshire Cat. Someone's coming! Hey! Oh, come on, we've only got the lunch, huh? No, it's too mucky. Oh, no, it isn't. Look! No! Look, I'm not going in that filthy place. I love you. It's a waiting room, right? Right. But then wait. Hey! It doesn't go for us. Come on. Mr. Gresham? Mr. Gresham? Well, if they'd gone out, they would have left their key at the desk. And Mr. Gresham? They have gone out. You give me Scotland Yard, please. No, there's no point in watching the hotel now. The Greshams slipped out of the hotel to get the money, it must be. And leave the country? They'd never risk collecting the loot so soon unless... I know, I know. Shall I issue descriptions? Airports and docks? Why couldn't I have caught them at something in their own line, something petty? Six months apiece, teach them a sharp lesson, straighten them out, maybe. This way, they're going to be separated for years. Well, they're only a couple of crooks. Well, crooks are human beings, David. These two, they... You wait till you're married. I want to know the moment that's raced. Why? Because I say so. Sir. There you are, 25,000. Now the passports. In a moment. The captain of the ship wants another 5,000 pounds. What? But look, Unless I tell him that it's been paid, you won't embark. But it'll only leave us 20,000. Your arithmetic is fast, your payment is slow. A 10-year prison sentence is even slower. Oh, all right. There are no photographs. They'll take care of that on board. No extra charge. Thank you. Well, when I drop you off, you know where to go. said anything about paying you. Without me, you don't know what tub to go on, right? It's not worth a thousand pounds. Look, I don't give a tinker's damn if you're going board. Neither does the captain. He's been paid and there's no refunds in this cruise. Want to say him? Thousand pounds. Pay him. Be talking about him now. Don't leave till then. Turn right outside here, and I'd be under the archway at the end of the alley. Charlie? Yeah? Can I use your phone? Certainly. Help yourself. Through the curtain, huh? One thing about all this mess, love. We're still together, even if we lose every penny. It's just... I hate leaving England. You won't be, Mrs. Gresham. I'm very, very sorry. Sorry you didn't listen to me. If you had to stay crooked, why the hell didn't you stay in your own class? Whatever made you think you'd get away with a caper like this, eh? Does it matter to you, come on? What does it matter to me? Do you think I like breaking up a couple like you for God knows how many years? Your job, isn't it? 
Believe me, Mr. Gresham, I'm not always happy in my work. When I think how I actually try to warn you. Oh, take him away. crooked wife. Together they lived a very crooked life. Con for their supper, stole for their rent. Very nice people, but unfortunately bent. <laughs> 